Hi students, welcome to Power Electronics Laboratory. In this video, we'll discuss about single phase fully controlled rectifier with R and RL load. Right? So we've already studied this in the theory part. So we'll discuss here with respect to R load and RL load where R is nothing but resistive load. RL means resistance and inductance both will be in series. Now the aim of the experiment is to study the output waveform of a fully controlled rectifier with R and RL load and its effect of freewheeling diode. To plot output voltage versus firing angle alpha for R and RL load operation. So this is our aim. Now freewheeling diode com will come into the picture only in RL load and freewheeling diode will be absent in R load. So this is the apparatus required. We need a single phase fully controlled bridge converter power circuit and then we need a single phase firing circuit, single phase isolation transformer, rheostat, inductance and CRO. So these are the apparatus which we require for this experiment. Now this is the uh, this is the circuit diagram which we'll be using for this experiment. So this is auto transformer where we can vary the voltage from 0 to 230 volts and this is a single phase isolation transformer which is used to isolate the supply and the converter and this part and this whole thing is a part of the kit where we need to connect using connecting wires right and this is the load this is the load so here it is in general it is mentioned as r load r load as well as l load right so if we connect only resistance here that is if we connect if we connect only the resistor here if we connect only the resistor here that is resistance r this becomes r load and if i put an inductance in series that will become rl load and again with the rl load if i connect one diode here one diode here that becomes rl load with freewheeling diode so the whole part remains the same only in this part will have some changes right that i'll explain explain when we are doing the connections so we'll move on to the next slide so this is the tabular column, serial number, firing angle, alpha, V0 practical, V0 practical will be observed from CRO, right, and V0 theoretical will be calculated using the formula. Now these are the waveforms which will be seen in the CRO. Now V in, as you all know, the input voltage will always be sinusoidal. So we'll apply a sinusoidal to the sinusoidal supply as the input AC and this is a firing angle 0 to 180 degrees. It can be fired anywhere from 0 to 180 degrees. So if we fire at this point, if we fire the supply, I mean if we fire the switches at this point, then until that point that is alpha, the voltage will be zero output voltage and from that point, whatever is the input, that same input will be available here. So from here you can see that if alpha was zero, we would have got a full supply voltage. And if alpha is 180 degrees, then the output voltage will be zero. You have to note that here. So whenever the switch is off, whenever the switches are off, that voltage will be available across the switches. So from zero to alpha, whatever voltage here, it was zero, that voltage will be dropped across SCR, right? This is the basic things which you should know. Right, so this is for R L load, right? So now here for R load, we'll have a continuous. Now if this was alpha, this will be the waveform, right? Until this, it will be zero, and only here we'll have the voltage waveforms, and here it will be zero, right? And from uh, inspection itself, you can know that here alpha is more than 90 degrees. 
for L load, RL load, what happens is you will have the same thing here from alpha to pi and here you will have a negative part because of discharge of inductance. Because of discharge of inductance, you, have, you will have negative part. So to eliminate this part, to eliminate this part, so what do you mean by rectifier? Rectifier is a circuit which converts AC to DC. So now since we have negative part here, we cannot tell it as pure DC. So to eliminate this one, we need to connect a freewheeling diode. So when we connect a freewheeling diode, this peak will be reduced. This peak will be reduced. So this peak will be reduced. So see, you can compare from here to here. The peak will be almost zero. It will be similar to R load. So even though if you have RL load, when you connect a freewheeling diode, RL load will be, the output will be similar to R load. Right, that is the advantage of freewheeling diode. So here you can see this is RL load and this is RL load with freewheeling diode. I hope you have understood the difference between RL load without freewheeling diode and RL load with freewheeling diode. Right. So now let us do the connections. So now first as I told you this basic diagram, this diagram will remain the same. Right. Only thing is here when I connect a R load, when I connect R load here, it will become fully controlled rectifier with R load. If I connect R L load, it will become fully controlled rectifier with R L load. If I connect R L and one diode, it will become fully controlled rectifier with R L load and freewheeling diode. Right. So that you have to understand. Now here, these are the things what we require. One is auto transformer isolation transformer this is auto transformer this is isolation transformer this is single phase firing circuit this is CRO to see the output and this is rheostat that is R load and this is inductance that is L load and this is multimeter to see the practical voltage right so now we'll see how to do the connections here now First thing what we'll do is we'll connect we'll connect the auto transformer to isolation transformer. So here you can see now this auto transformer is connected. This auto transformer is connected to single phase supply. So positive of auto transformer and negative of auto transformer right is connected to an isolation transformer. So what we'll do is we'll connect this wire to zero and one more wire will connect it to 240 volts so what we have done here we have connected auto transformer to isolation transformer now the supply will be available here this auto transformer and this isolation transformer you have to remember that it will be used only to isolate the supply and the load side right it will have different ground for that purpose we'll be using this isolation transformer or else we'll have some problems with respect to firing. That is why this isolation transformer is required. Now we have to connect this to the kit now. Now here we have finished this connection. Now isolation transformer you can just see. This isolation transformer now is connected to secondary of isolation transformer is connected to the MCB. Now here this zero volts I'll connect it here and 240 volts will connect it here right now the supply is given to the kit here now from the mcb this should be in off position always when we on the supply the supply will be available here so whatever supply is here that supply will be available here right now from here before doing this connections here we'll finish off this connections that is this connection here you can see four resistors connected in this way for uh, this thing thyristors are connected in this way crs now i will take this t1 t2 t2 dash t1 dash and t2 dash right t1 t2 t1 dash t2 dash now how are these connected now you can see that this anode is connected to t1 cathode so we need to connect a wire from here to here and again here there is one more connection from anode to cathode so from this point i'll connect one more wire here right and these two connect these two are connected and here these two are connected done so we have done this now we have done this connection now right and now how to connect this mcb this mcb should be connected to either 
anode of t2 dash or cathode of t1 dash so we'll connect it to cathode of t1 dash t1 so this will be connected to the mcb here right now the other point of the mcb that is negative is connected to cathode of t2 that is cathode of t2 is here so this wire will be connected here this wire will be connected here so we have finished giving the supply to the bridge right so now this connections will always remain the same for any type of the load right so now we'll see how to connect the resistive load here so this is the freewheeling diode you can see here dm this is the freewheeling diode now how is the load connected for r load so for r load the load will be connected in this way that is r load so i have to connect the rheostat here so what i'll do is i'll take one wire and connect it from here to this rheostat and i'll take one more wire from here and i'll connect it to this point of rheostat now the circuit is done now how to take the readings we have to set this uh, audio, uh, auto transformer to some 80 volts right you can set it to some 80 volts and then full 80 volts will be available here after isolation so 80 volts is given here when you switch on the supply the supply is available here so that supply is given to the bridge and the operation of this bridge uh, will operate and now it will go through the R load right now how to connect the CRO now here you can use either channel A or channel B right so you know that we'll have a black we'll have a wire we'll have a probe in which you'll have red and black wires so that probe will be connected to connected across this rheostat will be connected across this rheostat right and now for measurement of theoretical uh, for measurement of uh, practical voltage we have to connect one more wire that is now i'll show in different color so what i'll do is i'll connect a uh, multimeter across the load i'll connect the multimeter across the load right so now how to operate this you have to set this to 80 volts you have to switch on the mcb right and now one more thing is we have not given the firing circuit firing pulses yet now here you can see that we have four switches here t1 t2 t1 dash t2 dash right so here also it will be written that is t1 t1 dash t2 and t2 dash so the same kind of connection should be given here right so now t1 so you have to take a wire and connect from this green t1 green to this t1 green right next t2 or t1 dash right where is t1 dash t1 dash is here so this green will be connected here right again t2 t2 will be here so here t2 So this T2 is connected here and the last one T2 dash. So T2 dash will be connected here. T2 dash will be connected here. Right. Now how to connect the black wires? Black wires should be connected in this way. That is. So I've taken a black wire. Now this T1 will be connected to this wire, right? Again T2, T1 dash, T1 dash will be connected here, right? Again T2, T2 will be connected here. The last one T2 dash. T2 dash will be connected here right so this is how you have to do the connections I know that these are complex connections which you cannot make out from the uh, screen what you are seeing now simple way here you have T1 T2 T1 dash T2 dash right 
So the same switches you have to give the connections here. I hope you have understood this. Now coming to the operation part, first you have to switch. First you have to give 80 volts here. Once you give 80 volts, you have to switch on the MCB, and then this is your firing pulses. This is your firing pulses. So first you have to keep keep that at zero. You can start it from zero. Alpha is equal to zero. Then you have to observe the waveforms here. That is in the CRO. And then you have to see what is the voltage here and make sure that this multimeter is kept in DC mode. This multimeter is kept in DC mode. And then you have to measure the volt. I mean you have to measure the voltage and note down the theoretical value, right? Sorry, practical value and theory theoretical value. I have to calculate using the formula, right? Now this is all about resistive load. Now we'll move on to the next part that is RL load. So RL load, how we'll do? That is RL load will be connected in this way. I'll just erase these wires. Yes, so this connection remains the same. Now for RL load, what we have to do is we have to Yes, for RL load, only thing what you have to do is you have to connect these two in series. That is this resistance will be connected here. Right. And this starting of the resistance will be connected to this point which point this point and then this end will be connected to will be connected to this point right the only thing is here the resistance and uh, inductance are in series that's all right now how to measure the voltage we have to measure the voltage bit across r and l so what i'll do i'll connect this voltage across this point and I'll connect one more wire from this point. Again from CRO the same thing. From CRO you'll have two wires. So one wire will be connected here and the other wire will be connected here. Right? From the probe. So this will give you the readings for this will give you the readings for uh, RL load. Now with the same connections with the same connections with the same connections we have to connect the freewheeling diode so the freewheeling diode will be connected in this way that is only difference the one wire you have to connect it from here to here and again one more wire from here to here right so once you have done this this experiment is nothing but it is rl load with freewheeling diode right then you have to again vary the switching pulses with all the settings what i told earlier you have to note down the waveforms and the V0 values, right? So for RL load, how is the connection? Here you'll have resistance and inductance and with freewheeling diode, we'll have a diode here, right? So that is the experiment here, right? So here you have to note down the values that is firing angle, whatever I showed you in the firing circuit. V0 practical is from the multimeter and V0 theoretical, you have to calculate using the formula for respective loads, right? I hope you understood this experiment. Thank you.